We are back here now on the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast to talk some more rankings around the NFL and regarding the running backs. On our second to last stop here on the running back train, we're going to stop at the AFC South and talk about how it's looking in the running back department with the Jaguars, the Titans, the Colts, and the Texans. A lot of new additions and a lot of great potential in this division to get into. So starting off the discussion, obviously, as usual, with number four, I have... The Tennessee Titans. Why the Tennessee Titans? Well, they got Tony Pollard. They have Tajay Spears, the two running backs you see there on your screen. But based on last year, based on having one of the best running backs last year in the NFL in Derrick Henry, they were still middle of the league in terms of total yards with just recording 1,846 and also around the middle of the NFL in yards per game at 108, which isn't bad. But you obviously lose Derrick Henry. Now you have Tony Pollard stepping into that number one running back role. And how much can he pick up and carry the slack from what Derrick Henry was able to do? In terms of just the comparison, Derrick Henry accounted for 1,167 of the total 1,846 yards that the Tennessee Titans produced as a team. So that means Tajay Spears only contributed around 453 And there's only about 700 difference, 700 yards difference between Derrick Henry and what everybody else did in the rushing department for the Tennessee Titans. That's a lot of weight to carry for somebody that's departing the team and now trying to incorporate these um, new running backs or expect these two new running backs to have a lot more prominence in your offense. With Tony Pollard now coming in as a number one um, running back, back back-to-back years of over 1,000 yards. And I say over 1,000 yards because he technically got that, but I think it was only barely over 1,000, probably 1,034, 1,078, something like that. It wasn't that much more of over 1,000 yards, if that makes sense. You know, when you hear of 1,000 yards, you think, wow, he had a great year. Getting 1,000 yards is huge. And not to discredit him, but I think it doesn't hold the same weight as obviously Derrick Henry getting 1,200 yards, 1,100 yards, and Tony Pollard just exceeding that, but he is a solid addition, you know, not to say that he isn't, but I don't think it stacks up the same when somebody else, like a Derrick Henry, like a Saquon, or somebody else like that puts up a lot more. Um, You also have some uncertainties with the offensive line. They've improved a little bit, but still questionable at the guard position. Can J.C. Latham step in and be a starting tackle already right away as a rookie? Those are some question marks that they have to figure out there. But um, heading now more into Tajay Spears and focusing in on him a little bit more because I don't think Tony Pollard um, really uh, exceeds being that workhorse number one running back, getting over 30, 25 carries a game. I think you definitely need to spot him to get the best out of him. So how much can Tajay Spears contribute to the overall group success after a year or after years, I should say, with Derrick Henry really carrying the work of that running back group. Now I expect Tajay Spears to sort of step up a little bit more. Different offense, so they might not require that overall, but I think he's still definitely going to have to play a more prominent role if the Titans are going to get the best out of their running back group. Hopefully they prove me wrong, but for now I see them as the number four ranked team in terms of running backs in this division, which means moving on to number three, I have the Jacksonville Jaguars. This one This division overall was very hard to judge because they all had running back duos. It's not like one team had three capable running backs to sort of make the decision a little bit easier for me. All of them had two running backs that I was having trouble deciding where they would fit. And I have the Jaguars at number three because they had the least amount of rushing yards in this division last year. They were 24th in the NFL in total yards at just over 1,600. They had 96 yards per game as their average and it was a slight a slight dip in uh production form Travis Etienne and he had the double amount of touchdowns so that's a positive thing but in terms of yards it sort of dipped a little bit from what we saw in the year previous to that the second leading rusher on the team was Trevor Lawrence so that wasn't ideal obviously if you want to have a really good running back room I'm only considering running backs um as prominent figures to this because Trevor Lawrence isn't really much of a runner if that was part a major part of his game he is capable of running he is a good running quarterback when he has to but I don't think that's incorporated really into his game like it is with Lamar Jackson like it is with Justin Fields or these other quarterbacks that really 
you know, benefit from that running aspect of their game. Trevor Lawrence is a good athlete. He could get on the move, but that's not part of his game. So it's, for him to be the second leading rusher, I think it raises some questions here. As good as Travis Etienne is, I need to see a little bit more from Tank Bigsby. In his first year, he only had 50 carries as a rookie. And Doug Peterson has stressed that he wants to see more out of him. But to make a big jump from 50 carries to maybe 100 or 150, that is a big ask for somebody in his second year. I'm not saying that he's not ready for it, but... You know, to throw that onto him right away, I haven't seen it, so that'll be interesting. And it's too too much of this offense, too much of the running game is predicated just on Travis Etienne. We saw how that sort of crippled their team last year when he got injured. Maybe they overworked him last year. He got injured, and then their offense really struggled at that point of the year, the most crucial part of the year. So they're only going to benefit if they could spot Travis Etienne a little bit more. You need to see more from Tank Baseby, and so far we haven't. There's not enough tape out there to make me confident that he can make that next jump. He could, but for right now, I'm going to keep him at three because I'm not so sure uh, what Tank Bigsby has to offer this Jacksonville Jaguars team um, in a year where they want to get back to being contenders and want to live up to that hype they had at the beginning of last year. So with that in mind, you move on to number two, and the Houston Texans are number two for me because um, I think in terms of rushing, Getting the most out of this rushing attack, they definitely got better with Joe Mixon. Uh, moving on from Devin Singletary, bringing in Joe Mixon as that number one lead back. But again, I just don't think it's in their repertoire or in their priority list as the number one thing to do. Especially with this offense being so high-powered in the passing game. CJ has a great arm, established himself as one of the great young quarterbacks. You have Nico Collins, you have Tank Dell, you add Stefan Diggs, you have Dalton Schultz. I think they want to pass the ball and throw it all over the field more so than they want to run it. They definitely can run it, but I just don't think it really fits to their bill of what they're trying to do. They were 22nd last year in the NFL in terms of total rushing yards and in terms of yards per game, averaging less than 100 yards per game. And that was with Devin Singletary. Maybe Joe Mixon changes that a little bit more, but um, he is definitely an improvement from Devin Singletary and with Damian Pierce as a number to running back. I think that's as good of a situation you can have as in terms of a number two ranked or a number two running back in your own team. I think that's as good as it gets. But with Joe Mixon, he could definitely put up a thousand yard season, but you don't have enough of the ball to distribute to give Joe Mixon 200 carries, to give Stefan Diggs a thousand yards, Nico Collins another thousand, and Tank Dell. Something's going to have to be sort of in balance there. And I think they're going to throw it a lot more than we're going to see them running it. Not because they're incapable of doing it, but it's just not going to fit. And in terms of producing from that running game, that's why I have them at number two. Which means that number one and only leaves me with the Indianapolis Colts. Injured last season, both of these guys, so you really couldn't see them together in the backfield. But compared to what I said about Trevor Lawrence, Anthony Richardson fits that mold of running it being part of his game, running it when he really wants to, not when he just has to, but when he wants to run it and he sees a running lane, he will take it because he is a great runner. He has a huge frame to really punish defenders, honestly, um, secondary players to make tackles on him. He is a very hard guy to get on the ground, so that is part of his game compared to Trevor Lawrence. I think with Jonathan Taylor, comparing him to other running backs in this division, the level that we've seen Jonathan Taylor get to compared to Travis Etienne, even Joe Mixon. Jonathan Taylor was in the conversation for Offensive Player of the Year in 20, 2021 when he recorded over 1,800 yards, 18 touchdowns rushing in total, and 20 total touchdowns in that year. He had a case for MVP, even if a lot of people don't want to admit it for being a running back, but he certainly had that conversation, was in that conversation, and reached the highest level compared to any of these other running backs. So... You could make an argument that he is the best running back in this division. And with that, having Anthony Richardson, their offense in 2024 is going to be very exciting to watch. With how much they want to run with Anthony Richardson based on his health, that's up to them. But I think they're still going to use him, combine him with Jonathan Taylor, both tremendously talented in that running game, extremely hard to tackle. And now you don't know who has the ball. Plus, they added more weapons on the outside. I think it's going to make them very prolific in that sense. And they were already the highest ranked team in rushing stats in this division last year without really having both of these guys in at the same time. They were 10th in the NFL 
in total yards and in rushing yards per game. So the potential is there. They ranked very high last year. Now you're getting two of your star players back. I think this is going to be a very exciting Colts team to watch. As exciting as it has been in recent years. You add A.D. Mitchell, Michael Pittman, and Josh Downs. Don't sleep on the Indianapolis Colts. Maybe they have some holes on the defensive side of the ball. But offensively, I think in terms of rushing, they could be among the league leaders in 2024. But that'll all have to be proven out there on the field as always. Let me know what you guys think of my list. Did I take too much of a risk putting the Colts at number one? I'm high on the Colts. I like what they have. But tell me what you guys think in the comments section during the show or afterwards as well. But that'll do it for that segment. We have one more thing to talk about. More breaking news today. The Pittsburgh Steelers and the entire AFC North division was announced as the Hard Knocks feature in this year's in-season version of the show. Why was it the AFC North? What are my thoughts on it? I will provide that all after this break on the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. 